And now for much more on the crisis in Yemen, joining me here in the studio is Sama Al Hamdani. She is a Yemeni political affairs commentator. Also with us from Manama, Bahrain, is Abdul Latif Al Mulhim. He is a columnist for the Saudi daily newspaper Al Yam and the Arab News. Joining us too from New Jersey is Saeed Hussein Musavian. The former Iranian diplomat is a Middle East expert at Princeton University. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Sam, let me start with you. So we have this conflict in Yemen, which is being described as the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. The country at war being bombed daily. Now we have a cholera epidemic and looming famine. Mm -hmm. How bad is this? So we've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about it before. We've always warned that it will get worse and it continues to get worse. Uh, the cholera is estimated to be at 600,000 by the end of the year. The ICRC, the World Food Program, the World Health Organization have all spoken about this. UNICEF has warned that children are malnourished, they are dying. We continue to talk about deteriorating situations and what's clear is that everything we've predicted has come true. It continues to get worse. All these agencies have called it a humanitarian uh, disaster, a catastrophe, have urged the international community to step in, but it continues to ensue. So we can say humanitarian-wise, it's, it's pretty extreme. We've talked about how it's not a sectarian conflict, but now, mm. you know, three years, two years in, it has become a sectarian ethnic conflict with pretty much chaos on the ground. Uh, what does it look like? It looks like it will have a ripple effect on the region, for sure. Uh, whatever is happening in Yemen will, will end up affecting the neighboring countries. It will definitely add to the refugee crisis. It's going to be something that the world will look back at in shame because, as the ICRC president has called it, it is a man-made disaster. Everything can be controlled. Abdul Latif, Saudi Arabia is deeply involved in this conflict in Yemen. Uh, why is Saudi Arabia bombing Yemen? And does Saudi Arabia take any responsibility for the humanitarian crisis that has led from this bombing? Uh, first of all, um, hello, everybody. Um, uh, the young lady mentioned something, the, the word predictable in Yemen. As a matter of fact, what has happening in Yemen had been predicted for, uh, uh, for many decades. Um, and I wish Yemen or the Yemenis for once admit that uh, the, the many, of, many of the problems in Yemen uh, could have been solved by the Yemenis, the, by the Yemenis themselves. Um, the Yemen had always been um, uh, n not being fully ruled by a central government. There is always tribal feud, which is affecting the Yemeni people. I was, a, I was stationed on the borders of, between Saudi Arabia and Yemen about uh, 20 years ago. I saw, I saw it clearly coming because, because of the social divide. The, the, Yemeni, the Yemeni social divide between Yemen and Saudi Arabia is, uh, uh, is inciting uh, very, very clear signal inside Yemen that the Yemenis should have solved themsel themselves. Saudi Arabia for decades have contributed tens of billions of dollars of direct financial aid and uh, direct um, infrastructure aid that the Yemenis didn't take off. I didn't, didn't take advantage of. Yemen is very, very, very sad story, to be very, very frank with you. As for the conflict, it could be stopped from the first day that it, it, when it started in March of 2015. It could be stopped by, tom by, by, by tomorrow if the Houthis are willing really to stop it. Saudi Arabia have extended a hand to say, let's have a ceasefire, let's stop the fighting. And there are one condition that the Houthis get rid of their uh, weapons along the Saudi borders. Not only uh, small arms, but we are talking about SCAD missiles that are being fired into the deep uh, uh, Saudi territories. Right. And in 2009, there was a, a massive Houthi attack that was encountered by Saudi forces. And we don't want this th thing to happen again. Saudi Arabia didn't want the conflict, and we don't want the war. And we really feel sorry for the Yemenis. And put in your mind that there are millions of Yemenis in Saudi Arabia, and there isn't one single day that any Saudi doesn't deal with the Yemeni in Saudi, in, inside Saudi Arabia. As for the cholera epidemic, it is, it, is, it, is very, it is very sad. But put in your mind that 30 years ago, it was predicted that Yemen would be the first country in the whole world to actually run dry, run out of water. Yes, the conflict may be 
a speeded up V epidemic, that's fine. Yeah. But the, 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 the diseases, the cholera is, is, is something is not, not new in Yemen. Unfortunately, right. Yemen had always been the poorest country in the Middle East. Let me go to and, Saeed. And the uh, cholera epidemic could be, is, is stoppable and is, is preventable. I mean, uh, there are uh, one million um, uh, vaccine ready to be transferred to Yemen, but the conflict is not, is not giving it a chance. Okay, Abdullah Chief. Let me go to Saeed in New Jersey. And Saeed, uh, what do you make of the Saudi argument that this is about Saudi security and that Saudi Arabia has no choice? Uh, I don't believe war is a solution to bring security. You remember Iraq's invasion of Iran. It did not bring security to Iraq. Saudi Arabia's invasion of Yemen is not going to bring security to Saudi Arabia. I believe uh, they are planting the seeds of insecurity for years and decades to come by attacking Yemenis, killing tens of thousands of Yemenis, uh, destroying up to now about 50% of civilian in infrastructure of Yemen is destroyed. Millions are displaced. 10,000 people have been killed. Half a million people are struggling with uh, uh, a medical disease. This is not the way to bring security to Saudi Arabia. I believe uh, uh, diplomacy from the beginning should have been the solution, should have been the uh, initiative for Saudi Arabia to negotiate with Yemenis in peaceful ways in order to resolve the security uh, concerns. But we should remember Yemenis started to attack Saudi Arabia after they were attacked by Saudi Arabia. They reciprocated, you know, uh, up to now, over 120,000 uh, sorties of uh, air strike have been launched by Saudi Arabia. 120,000. About 3,000 refueling uh, oil supported by the U.S. It is not only Saudi Arabia. We should be very frank and sincere and discuss the realities. It is the U.S. supporting Saudi Arabia invasion of Yemen. Without U.S. Uh, weapon, intelligence, fuel, uh, 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 and all supports the U.S. is doing, the Saudi Arabia could not do the invasion of Yemen. You read the editorial board of New York Times saying that the coalition led by Saudi Arabia would have been grounded without uh, U.S. support. Okay. You are reading Foreign Policy a magazine of United States saying that all air strike and refueling have been only guided and led by, by, by United States of America. Therefore, we need to discuss the wrong U.S. policies, Saudi uh, wrong policies, attacking the poorest Arab nation in the world. You know, they are right. the poorest Arab nation. Uh, Sam, I want to get to something that Abdul Latif said. He said this is a crisis, this is a conflict that's been decades in the making, that there have been divisions inside Yemen, and that Saudi Arabia f has felt threatened by Houthi rebels in the south. Yeah, I mean, the Houthi rebels were in the north, actually, and then the they north. made their way to the south. Uh, he said some things that rang true, but at the same time, uh, it's ironic that he pointed out that Yemen is the first country to run out of water, but cholera is a disease that comes by the spread of contaminated water. So it has nothing to do with the country running out of water. It has to do with a virus being in water that's easily treatable, that is not being treated because humanitarian relief is hostage to a political situation. Uh, what we see is right now the willingness and the capacity to be able to resolve the cholera spread, to feed the hungry, to take care of the children, but none of that is happening because everybody is holding it as a political chip to bargain at a table uh, where nobody is talking about peace. Everybody's talking about victory, winning, moving forward, um, meanwhile neglecting the way that the Yemenis are suffering. Now, it's, there's no doubt that the Saudi Arabia would, you know, be p taking part in this if it didn't feel threatened in the first place, but at the same time, is the response, uh, you know, fitting of the situation in Yemen. Now, Yemen is a country that they've both mentioned is poor, is um, 
pretty much moving in a direction that doesn't, you know, does not le uh, seem great. But at the same time, what the war is doing is is kind of accelerating that. Uh, it's making everything ten times worse. And at the same time, we have to remember that the former regime that uh, was in Yemen prior to 2011, the president Abdullah Saleh, who supported the former president, was supported by the Saudi regime. They gave him the money, uh, knowing full well that when it wasn't spent correctly, it was going to his pocket, and he was an ally of theirs. So when we talk about this war, we have to talk about political shifts. Right. For example, King Salman's agenda in Yemen is very different from King Abdullah's agenda in Yemen. And with that, you see uh, what we're seeing today. And I agree with him as well that the, the war could have ended on the first day yeah. if there was a political solution. But that's the problem. Okay. There's no political solution. Right. Abdul Latif, uh, you know, we have a humanitarian crisis here, which is absolutely massive. We're hearing about the suffering of the people in Yemen, the cholera epidemic, the famine. Uh, does Saudi Arabia believe that there is a military solution to this? The, the closest people to the Saudi, to, to, the, to the, the closer people to the Yemeni people, to the Yemeni people, are the Saudis. And the, there, as I say, there are millions of Yemenis in Saudi Arabia. And even after the start of the war, King Salman Humanitarian Center have paid tens of millions of dollars to help the to help the Yemenis. And if the Yemenis are feeling the crunch, I wish one day or to, even today or tomorrow to actually declare that the, the, the hostilities will be stopped and there will be no threat to the Saudi, uh, to the Saudi borders. The, the Yemeni people are getting the sympathy of the Saudi government, the sympathy of every single Saudi. I am one of them. As I said, I was in the South. I saw how bad the situation in Yemen. And I wish one day the Yemenis would think very, very seriously about eradicating the habit of chewing the gut, which is the chewable leaf that is simply eating the, the daily income of many Yemenis. Is there a humanitarian crisis in Yemen? Yes. But is this something you know? Yemen had always never and never, never been uh, stable and always been in need of health care system that, believe it or not, is supported by Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states for the past past decades. The cholera epidemic could be stopped if there is the, the, the conflict is stopped. So I wish the Houthis would declare, say, OK, let's stop the hostilities. And as far as the cholera vaccines, I, today I read an article, uh, a very interesting article by Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Elizabeth uh, uh, Elizabeth Dixon about the uh, the, uh, um, the cholera vaccines. There are one million uh, vaccine uh, units that are ready to be transferred. And if the, there is not mutual trust between 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 parties, I wish when when uh, neutral countries okay. uh, and, and powerful like the United States would actually be able to take these vaccines, the, the you know hundreds of thousands of vaccines to the Yemeni children. Right. All right, we are going to have to take a break right now. Much more on the war and humanitarian crisis in Yemen when we return. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.